Alright guys, for this video, we're going over all the Remembrance weapons from the DLC and ranking them in order for PvP. We're only going over ones with unique Ashes of War, so the Sword Lance and the Staff of the Great Beyond are not included. Alright, so last on the list guys, is Pole Blade of the Bud. Originally, I thought I was really gonna like this weapon, especially because it's a halberd, but it has the sword spear move set. So, like a guardian sword spear, it has the exact same move set as that, as well as dealing scarlet rot. It deals pretty low damage because it is a status effect weapon, but that's also the real downside with the weapon because <laughs> I couldn't even use this in actual invasions to make it work. I had to take it to the arena, and the worst part too in the arena is. Almost everybody that you fight, you're going to kill them just by its basic moveset alone before they even become Scarlet Rotted. And I mean, even if you do Scarlet Rot them, by that point they're already so screwed anyways that it would have just been a running attack to finish them off. The only real neat thing that I noticed about the weapon was the Ash of War itself. Because, again, I tried to use it in invasions, but it didn't really work that well. But the Ash of War... It travels pretty far, so I mean, in fairness, if you really are putting pressure on somebody, it kind of lets you stay on them, but at the very same time, it gets you out of a place really fast if you need it, but you can be knocked out of the air when you're using it. Overall, it's a disappointing status effect weapon that comes with a good moveset, but I mean, you can maybe make it work if you're using status effect builds, using other weapons, but alone, it's not very viable. Okay guys, next is a Shadow Sunflower Blossom. So guys, long story short, this thing really sucks. <laughs> like, it really sucks. The only reason it's not last is because it's a colossal weapon. So I think just by default, it's superior to a halberd. And I only mean superior in the sense that it comes with hyper armor, and I think in PvP that's a massive thing. So, that's the only reason it really overtakes the whole blade of the bud. The Ash of War is what's really disappointing on this weapon. It's an overhead slam that's really slow, that you can use two additional inputs to give it two additional hits, but the additional hits are also slow and very short range. It has a basic Colossal Weapon moveset, which I'm not the hugest fan of, but it does have a unique heavy attack. Um, <laughs> but the real issue with the unique heavy attack is I actually think it's for the worse. I don't think that the heavy attack is actually better than the base Colossal Weapon heavy attack, so... Even though it is unique, I think it's for the worse. Next up is Rolana's Twin Swords. When I originally got these swords, I thought they were going to be one of the new metas. I thought they were going to kind of be like the Goddard Twin Blades from Dark Souls 3. Because damage-wise and moveset-wise, they're really, really good. So this is almost essentially like the Sword of Night and Flame, except they're paired great swords. Your scaling and everything you get is very similar. It's faith and intelligence. Um, it does high damage, but the real letdown with these swords is just the fact that you do no poise damage at all. If you're against somebody using dexterity-based weapons where they're not getting any hyper armor, then fine. But if you're against somebody using colossal weapons, I feel like it's a huge, huge disadvantage. The problem of the Ash of War stance, really to me, is just the glintstone aspect of it, where you use a light attack. Because the fire part with the heavy is actually really good, because it's really good at breaking poise, and there's pillars of fire that explode after you use it. Whereas the magic aspect of it is very, very short range. Like, I'll admit, the projectiles are fast, so it's actually like pretty good to catch someone off guard. But you have to be very, very close for that to actually hit. So overall, they are really cool weapons, and I mean, again, they do a lot of damage, but it's really the poise that's the issue for me. Next up is a Putrescence Cleaver. So this weapon, guys, I really wanted it to be good. Um, and I mean, it does have its uses, but I really do have to admit, I'm also not a very big fan of this weapon either. Um, this is a great axe, which is one of the reasons it's even this high up on the list and i also gave it just a little bit of a higher spot on the list because it is unique and i can actually see this being something that other people can use i could have just been using it improperly my biggest issue with this weapon is just like most great axes it has very very short range i mean 
especially when you use this, because originally you would kind of think it would have a bit of a unique move set just because of the boss that was using it. But the only thing that's really unique about it is the Ash of War. <laughs> I think a backstep attack actually might have been very unique to the weapon itself. I don't use a lot of great axes, but the backstep attack was something that I uh, remember that looked a little bit different. So the Ash of War, if you press it, you can continue to put repeated inputs to continue it all the way until you run out of stamina. Once you hit the heavy attack, once you're using the Ash of War, it's like a finisher to it. So essentially, you'll keep moving forward if you hit the additional inputs on your Ash of War, but once you hit heavy attack, it finishes it off, and it's basically you leap forward more and you do a couple more smashes that I think are a little bit quicker. One of the biggest drawbacks I found to this with the Ash of War is the Ash of War is not going to work very well in invasions. I kind of was thinking that that's where it would be the most useful, but the reality is when I used this weapon, it really turned out this was an arena PvP weapon. Like, if you're going to use it in PvP, you don't want to use it in invasions because you just don't. It's much more of a dueling weapon in that sense. But, yeah. I really wish it was a little bit better than it is, but I couldn't find that great of a use for it. It was fun, but overall, I think the weapon still left a lot to be desired. I really put a lot of time into testing this weapon because I was really hoping there was something I was missing with it, but maybe I'm just not a great axe user. I tried to do it in Dark Souls 1 because I thought they were cool, but found out quickly there that they're pretty useless because of their range, but it's a fun weapon, but again, not my favorite to use. So next up, guys, is the Great Swords of Radon. The reason they're ranked together is because despite the different Ash of War, they're the exact same weapon. They even maintain the same moveset from the original Radon Greatswords from the base game. They also do magic gravity damage just like those. Visually, they look a little more slender and long, and they also do have different scaling and base damage. But at the very same time, they're basically the same weapon, with very few differences. When it comes to comparing the two themselves against each other, I do believe that the Lord variant is better than the Light, simply because it's a bigger combo with two additional inputs. And at the last input, the beams of light that it sends out will knock all enemies up into the air. Lightspeed Slash, on the other hand, is a little bit less useful. Like, you can charge it, but the reality is, is charging it really telegraphs it. The best way to use that is to just use the quick, instant Lightspeed Slashes for a quick, cheap amount of damage. The tracking on Lightspeed Slash is pretty good, but they have to be relatively close for it to actually land. When it comes to the Lord variant, the skill is really nice, you're not going to do a massive amount of damage with it, but you can free aim it, and on top of that, if they do take the full combo, it will hurt them pretty bad, but it does have short range. So you want to be up pretty close if you're going to use the uh, Lord version's Ash of War. Aside from that, my biggest issue with the weapons is I don't like the paired Colossal Sword moveset, to be honest. I just don't. Like... It feels just such short range. It's kind of like the Great Axe. I feel like I'm forced to stay right up next to them. And during invasions, I think that's a really bad time. If you're dueling somebody in the arena, it's not quite as bad because you just have to wait for your moment of hyper armor. But during invasions, you have to keep pressure on and that makes it a lot harder. So next up guys, and I don't have a whole lot of clips for it, but it is a Mesmer's Impaler. So this is a great spear, so already by default it is one of the best weapon classes in the game. So the Ash of War, you essentially jump up, it's some kind of a weird push, followed by an instant slash, and then you can do two additional inputs to lengthen it out. The thing is, is that even if you don't do the full combo, that initial push at the beginning does break poise of people that are close, I've noticed, and then the instant slash after does a massive amount of damage. Essentially, it's a very deadly Great Spear with no status effects, but a very, very deadly Ash of War. The biggest drawback on it is the heavy attacks, because they're actually a throwing attack. It might sound nice, but the real problem with the throwing is that it actually takes a lot longer, so the attack is really telegraphed. I haven't really been able to land it when I was trying to use it on people, just because it's just far too slow. Alright guys, so next up for second place is the Great Sword of Damnation. This is a faith-based greatsword that possesses the thrust moveset. 
So that alone already puts this pretty high up on the list because great swords are a really good weapon choice, but especially when they have the thrust move set. And this isn't even taking the Ash of War into account. So this Ash of War is PvP specific. This is meant to be used on players or NPC characters. The Ash of War is a leap where you go up into the air and you stab downwards. If you manage to grab a player, you'll catch them and then the barbs will explode outwards. If you don't actually make contact, you can still do an additional input to set off that explosion and it will just go across the ground. So even if you don't snag a player, you can still actually do some damage. You're also given quite a bit of hyper armor while you're in the middle of the leap. So it's useful in ganks against multiple people because you'll hyper armor through attacks, you'll catch somebody and vigor check them, and because of the high damage, there's a good chance you can one-shot people with this move. I couldn't find any drawbacks for this weapon. The only one that I can even think of is on the leap, it has a weird finicky way that it actually grabs people, which I really can't put a finger on. You just have to test it yourself, but that's the only weird thing about the weapon. And my first place, guys, is the Gazing Finger. This is a colossal weapon that has unique heavy attacks and a really, really good Ash of War. The Ash of War on this is what really, really makes it just so special. So you slam it into the ground, so it's, initial, it's an initial hit off the bat, followed by the AoE explosion. The Ash of War is insane, especially because of the amount of hyper armor that you're given. The amount of attacks that you can actually tank when you are charging the Ash of War is pretty insane. At the beginning of the Ash of War, you have an initial hit that staggers before the AoE. You're being chased by a group of people, this is very helpful, because that first hit, if they're using dexterity based weapons, it'll be enough to slow them, just enough for the full AoE to hit them and maybe other people with them. The Ash of War's AoE also has a lot of lingering hitboxes meaning an area that you just drop that across is still deadly a second or two after you've done it. And unlike the Sunflower Blossom, the unique heavy attack on this weapon is actually pretty strong. It's really good at breaking poise and it does a lot of damage too. Just the basic heavy attacks. There's been very few circumstances in Souls games where I've felt this strong during invasions. Not only that, but because you're using faith and intelligence for the base stats, you can still use spells on a build that you're using this weapon with. Well guys, that's my list, personally. Leave a comment on which ones you guys think are the best. Like, comment, and subscribe, and please share with your friends if you think the video is enjoyable. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you're hearing this right now. Appreciate you.